and welcome to a special edition of Board Games Everybody Should... Dot, dot, dot. Why is it special? Because today I'm looking at a Kickstarter game which is coming out on March the 1st 2014 and finishing on April the 1st 2014. So if you're watching this video and it's 22.57 I'm afraid you've missed out. But you never know, the game might be licensed under Wizards of the Coast and have a slight different theme but you can still get the game. The game is called Mutiny by Mikael Valencourt and it's been published by Folklore. It's a game for 6 to 18 players which makes it kind of a party game and it involves bluffing, secret roles, secret information and negotiation and of course pirates. Let me introduce you to some of the characters that are in the game. The first person is the chef, uh, cook who must know the rules and run the game. Hey, Chef. I am the cook. I cook things. Then there's the captain, whose job it is to stay alive. I be the captain of this ship, the jolly Kakaburan. Arr! Then there are the mates, who look after the captain. Hey mates. Oh my! <laughs> I love my captain! <laughs> and then they're the traitors who are trying to kill the captain. <clears throat> I be the traitor. I don't like what the captain's doing. Okay, so the game comes as a deck of cards. And as you can see, this is what I have, but this will probably vary uh, from the actual finished product uh, because this is a Kickstarter. Now if you've played games like Werewolf or Bang or Resistance, this will be pretty similar to it. Basically, your chef, cook, 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 your cook will prepare all the characters, so you'll have one captain, Do the beam up, Scotty! Arr. And you'll have several traitors. Poison! <laughs> we will poison him! <laughs> and you'll have several mates. Oi oi! For example, if you were playing a nine player game, you'd have one person as the cook, one person as the captain. There's no cook card, for starters. Um, and then you'd have three traitors and four mates. That kind of balances the game quite nicely. The cook will then mix these up and distribute them to the other players. Um, a table is very, very important in this game because you're going to need it. Um, everyone will look at their roles secretly, and the captain, if you get the captain card, you have to show everyone that you're a captain. Everyone knows that you are the captain, so that's the only card that's revealed. Yeah, I'm a captain! Look at me, captain! <laughs> then immediately after, the cook will say, okay, it's night time, everyone go to sleep, everyone closes their eyes and looks down, and then he will say, okay, the traitors, open your eyes and look at each other. So the traitors will look at each other um, and know who they are, and then the cook will ask the traitors to pick silently one player that they wish to poison. Now they have to unanimously point silently to one player. It could be one of their own team, it could be one of the mates, or it could be the captain. The cook will then make a mental note of who they've picked and then ask them all to close their eyes. Then he will repeat this for the shipmates. The mates will then open their eyes, look at each other, so they'll know who the bad guys are. But the captain, he does not see a thing throughout this. Again, he'll ask the shipmates um, who would they like to poison. Again, they do a secret vote by pointing to one player. Again, one of their own team, one of the other team, or the captain. And then, after that, he'll ask everyone to wake up and he will prepare the meals. Now, in the deck, there are meal cards. 
which look like that. But there are two which are poisoned, which look like that. Okay, and he would distribute these face down, hidden. And then starting from the captain's left, he will ask everyone to do an action. Now, the mates and the traitors can do one action, well, two actions. They can either swap their meal with someone else's meal, therefore it's easy to slide across the table, um, or we'll ask them, they can do nothing. They could just be happy with the meal that they've got in front of them. So this will go around the table until it gets to the captain. Then the captain has one action. He can do several things. He can keep his meal if he's happy, or he can swap his meal with another player, or he can ask two other players to swap their meals. And last but not least, he can do this action only once, which is ask one of the other players to taste his meal. Then after the captain has had his action, all the players reveal their meal cards. Anyone that's been poisoned is eliminated from the game. And then the game continues in the same fashion, but this time it goes round anti-clockwise from the captain. The game will then end one of two ways. The captain will be poisoned, which means that he's dead, and the traitors have won. If all the traitors are dead, then that means that the mates and the captain have won. Now there are some other roles that come in the game which can be introduced. And you have, for example, the cunning mate and the cunning traitor. Now basically these have an extra skill, which is if the captain asks them to test the meal, they can refuse and then they have to reveal if they are the cunning traitor or the cunning mate. Then there is the Potion Master, who can, for one turn, save someone from dying. He's loyal, he's with the mates. So if one of his mates gets killed off with poison, he can reveal himself and save that person from being killed off. This is useful for saving the captain, because he can save the captain as well, and also himself. <laughs> okay, so before I wrap up this video, I just want to point out a couple of things. Number one, um, I haven't played many games of this kind of genre. Um, I've played um, Nosferatu, um, and I've played games similar to Werewolf, uh, but a long, 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 long time in my past. So I've had a dabbling in this kind of genre of game. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is that I'm doing this review as a kind of, you know, with the version that I have, which is a, a Kickstarter project. Um, so all the components and everything is not full 100% the finished product. So uh, bear that in mind um, as some of the things that I will be saying will be a little bit negative. So to sum up, Mutiny is a Kickstarter game that everybody who is into this kind of genre of game should look into. It is fun, it is very quick to play, it is very easy to learn. Um, and it's quite an enjoyable social experience. Now, to the negatives. Um, the rules come on these cards. Um, the, the font is too small. The, the colouring is not perfect. I've spoken to the designer, Miguel, about this. And um, he said that it's going to change. So, The other thing about the rules is... Uh, they are well written, they're precise, they're clean, uh, but they're flavourless and they have holes in them. Um, these holes came along as we played. Um, holes like um, what happens when a player is eliminated? Can they still vote? Um, do they reveal their identity? What happens if the last traitor and the captain die on the same round? Who wins? Because it's like egality. And one rule which is really important is can the players negotiate and talk? I say this because the first few games of this, whenever I've had a new group, um, when it got to the action phase where people will pass around meals, nobody would say anything. They would just swap meals or not swap meals. And there was no negotiation, there was no bluffing, there was no communication, and the games were kind of okay. But in reference to the, the communication and the talking and bluffing, um, when we did play it as a group, 
um, and we were all talking, it was quite easy to say, okay, uh, they're the traitors and we're the mates. Because you could say it. There was no really to say, no, you can't say it. And again, it was quite easy to distinguish for the captain to figure out that, oh, there's five people saying that those are the traitors and four people saying that those are the traitors. So it was obvious, because of the balance of the game, that the five were not the traitors and the four were. This is something that I wish was a bit different. I wish that, you know, uh, on your action phase, that you were allowed to say a phrase um, before exchanging your food or not exchanging your food. Like, Captain, if you trust me, you will not take this one because this one's the poison. Or, um, I believe you're a traitor, you can have my poison or you can have my meal. That would generate a bit of uh, curiosity because I found uh, when I read the rules to the game I thought the game was going to be a lot more of secret identities but it, after the first round it's quite easy to figure out who the traitors are and who the, the, the mates are and that kind of deflated the game a bit for me because as I said I, I, when I read the rules I built the hype up it was going to be a bit like resistance where nobody knows who's good and who's bad and I'm waving my hands about a bit too much, I think, for this video. Just sit on them. Another thing I think the game, the rules of the games needed was a better definition of what the arrangement is for the teams. Um, as it stands, it says, usually a slight majority of shipmates is recommended for a balanced game. But... I found this was more like, you know, here you go, try it however you want to try it, see how it works for you. Which is a bit hit and miss, because you, you'll, you'll organise the deck of cards of characters, and it, the game could go either way. And I felt it was a bit reckless. It should it should be in the ropes. It, it, it's... It should be written in the rules that, here's a suggested format, so if you have... 10 players, you have this many traitors, this many. It's just a minor niggle, but I think that that would have made the game um, a lot more easy to play and jump into. Again, just playing solely with the mates and the traitors, some games would end a bit quickly when the captain was killed on the first round accidentally, uh, which was kind of funny, but didn't you know generate much you didn't do this explanation for a game, it took you 10 minutes to explain and then prepare, and then Two minutes into the game, the captain's dead, game's over. It's best to play it with all the extra character cards. And I wish there were more character cards. Because one of the things, again, is if a character had, say, the Potion Master, and they were unsure, they'd look at a reference sheet which I'd printed up. Um, and then you, everyone would look at them, looking at the reference sheet, and go, okay, they've got a special power. <laughs> I just wish there were more special powers because the special powers did make the game it extended the game and made it more fun and a bit more intriguing that was brilliant now the game is about pirates trying to kill their captain and will try and save their captain and let's talk about the art that is the only flavor that there is in the game there is nothing else in the game it needs more flavor it's like this packet of pirate biscuits. On the biscuits there's nothing apart from the name of the producer and there's nothing piratey about them and they don't even taste like parrot. When you explain the game to people as the chef oh, as the cook, sorry, um, it's kind of blah 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 blah. A bit probably like this video. Um, and, and what it needs is it needs uh, a maybe a, a card with a script on it for the cook to read to the players and say that for example after I first tested the game I was like mm, people are not in the spirit of the game um, so I introduced a story I said that the captain um, was a camp captain and he wanted to go on a voyage and just hang around Jamaica and get a suntan and some of the crew were unhappy about this and wanted to go around pillaging and getting pieces of eight and, and, and sinking battleships. And some of the crew were happy in it. Oh yes, it would be great to have a captain and get some tan and just veg on a beach and drink sangria. 
Um, so that was the story that I introduced. And um, people got into the the, the 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 theme of the game a bit. And I tried to convince people to do ah when they they swap their meals, um, just to give it that piratey feel. Because there's there's nothing in the game to make it piratey. I wish there was. It, it needs more theme. I talk about the card art um, because it is the only thing. Um, it is going to be changed at the moment. The one I have is the characters are on red and the food is on green. And that was a bit of a problem because when people revealed their meal, sometimes they would actually, actually reveal their character. Whoops. So that's going to be changed. Uh, but another thing I would like to see changed is the meals themselves. The poisoned and the non-poisoned. It should be a bit more distinct. It should be a coloured background because as the cook, if you're sorting through the cards when you've just collected them, it's... You know, it's, it's a bit hard to distinguish. And again, when you reveal, it'd be nice to just flash. You can see that person over there has been poisoned. <laughs> Instead of you looking around and you're going around, who's been poisoned then? Who's been poisoned? Just a, a minor niggle about the art. So, that's my niggles aside. The game was enjoyable when we kind of figured out how the game played. Um, it... The game feels a bit under underdeveloped at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that they can polish it up a bit more, make it a bit more, va boom, give it more pirate theme, and and make it so the the gameplay is narrow like that. So there's not all these wandering lines. Oh, what happens if we do this? And what happens if we do that? It's it'd be nice if it was clear cut um, with some kind of directional goal. Um, the fact that there's two secret things, you've got the secret identities, and then you've got the secretness of the the meals and the poison, is great. I like that. Unfortunately, um, it didn't play out as well as I expected it to play out, but it's there still. People that I talked to uh, enjoyed the game. Um, some people found it hard to come back to it, though. You know, that's kind of the mediocre group. The people that play these type of games love the game. They, find, they found it funny and wanted to play again. But as someone who's, how shall I put it, who's not into this type of game, who's not into this kind of werewolf bang thing, uh, this game is not going to turn them around. A lot of the people that played it who are not fans of werewolf or bang said, well, it's just werewolf and bang, uh, doesn't do anything for me. So uh, if you're a fan of those games, you'll probably like this one quite a bit. If you're not a fan of those games, you're not going to like this one. But aside from that, the game was enjoyable, it was laughable, um, especially when the communication started to come. Um, and it, it was just a big social experience. So if you're into these big kind of party games and you th this sounds the game to you, back it.